I don't care what it feels like. Good evening. We thank you for tuning in to Rhyme Word Ministries, where Apostle KJ Mack is our pastor. We're excited this uh, evening about the mid word um, that God has uh, in store for all of us. Um, we're going through some times, but God has still a word for us. And if you don't mind sharing with us, share, tag, and like um, this video. Um, we hope that you enjoy. We hope that you learn something. We hope that you have something to put in the cabinet of your heart. But we're just excited. And so we're just going to go ahead and pray. And we thank God for you tuning in today. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, it's us, God, coming in the need of prayer, Father. Father God, we just praise you, we magnify you, and we give you all the glory, God. We thank you, Lord God, for all the things that you're doing, all the things you've already done, and Lord God, all the things that we have in, that you have in store for us, God. So, Father God, we just praise you right now, Lord God. Equip us, Lord God, to be able to take out the task, Lord God, to be able to carry it out, Lord God. Not just for ourselves, Lord God, but for our families, for our loved ones, for our neighbors. Us, Lord God, let this time be a time, Lord God, that we hear from you, God, and know that you are with us, Father God. So, Father God, we just praise you, we magnify you, and we give you the glory. In the awesome name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. We're excited about this word um, that God has, it has put into our spirits, Lord God, and we just want you to join in with us. And I'm coming from the book of Judges. Judges, starting at the sixth chapter. Um, starting at the 36th verse. If you have your word, and I hope that you do, and for your lot of studies, um, be able to, to, to dive back into it and find something that fits you or your family. So we're starting at Judges 6, starting at the 36th verse, and it reads, Then Gideon said to God, You said you would help me save Israel. I will put me some fleet on the threshing floor. This is due only on the wool, but all the ground is dry. Then I will know that you are with me and you have used me to save Israel, as you said. And that is just what happened. When Gideon got up the next morning, early, he was able to squeeze the fleets and he was able to get a full bowl of water from it. Then Gideon said to God, don't be afraid with me. Don't be angry with me. Then Gideon said to God, don't be angry with me. If I may just ask one more thing, please let me make one more test, one more request. Let only the wool be dry while the ground around it gets wet with dew. That night, God did that very thing, just the fleet was dry but the ground around it was soaking wet with dew here in uh, judges 6 starting at the 36th verse we have learned that gideon was uh, anointed by god he had just been through um a defeat um he had just with the midianites and he had just um had, had gone through a lot of things like most of us we go through a lot of things, but we have that very question. We may not mention it to each other. We may not mention it to our loved ones, or we may not even admit it to ourselves, but we want to ask God that very question. When things go wrong, are you with me? When things are not how they used to be, you know, we, we, we're experiencing now a, a new norm. So, uh, God, are you with me? You know, uh, most of the times when, when, when we're diagnosed with different things and, and, and this pandemic has come up, this COVID has found us, we want to know, God, where are you? And so Gideon had to know that even though um, he had already just been through some things, he had already uh, been defeated, he had already uh, needed to know, and, and, and this was during a famine, and most of the time we find ourselves in a famine, and most of you know what a famine is, it's a dry place. It's somewhere where you don't have the things that you used to have. Some of us don't work like we used to work. Some of us uh, had to make adjustments in our move, in our household, and do adjustments the kids don't go to school right now we have to make adjustments that mean that in this famine that has found this land that Gideon he, he had something 
You know, sometimes you, you know that you know some people have more than, than the other. And sometimes people don't have nothing at all. You see people all the time asking for a handout, asking for help. But in this season right here with Gideon, Gideon asks God for help. Gideon say, it, it, what you said you was going to do, God, are you going to do it? Right now, during this time, the people need you. We need you. And I got a little some, but is it enough to share? At this time, you, you, you can't hide what God has given you. Sometimes God will allow your cup to overflow. Sometimes God will allow you to have more than enough. Sometimes God will, and it's not for you, but it's for somebody else. So right now, during this time that we're going through in our lives, we got to be like Gideon. If you got it, share it. If you got it, put it out there. If you got it, call your neighbor. You know, I, I used to remember back when, when they say that you, you could borrow a cup of sugar from your neighbor. But right now, we're in this famine sometimes. I need the sugar, the cream. I need the, the meat to go with it. I need some flour. I need it all. I need the whole course meal. And if you got it, share it with me. So what I'm saying is that some people not working how they used to work. But when they was working, you was able to get a five dollar meal from them but right now we're in the time that that we don't even have it like we used to and we can't depend on government we can't depend on uh, uh, the country people to bring it up we got to depend on God and right now we're asking God God are you with us and so God had to show Gideon he you know God you, you know if we hear all the time don't test God don't test God. But Gideon found himself bold enough to say, God, you've been with me. Are you with me now? And so I'm asking those out there in, in, in the land, can you ask God, is he with you? Has he shown you that he's with you? Can you encourage your neighbor because he's still with you? God, let me see. Let me see. And, 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 and me, woman of faith. You, people of faith, you still ask God during this time, is he with us? Because we have family members that have been struck with this, this land thing. I'm going to call it a land thing. Why? Because God still is covering the land. So you know if God is covering the land, this will be over soon. And so my encouraging words to you tonight is to be like Gideon. God, you see it. See, you, you, can, you got a relationship with God. See, that's what it's about. When you, you, you can tell God or ask God, God, you said that you would help me save Israel. And so that's the 36th verse. And he said that the way I'm going to see that you're with me, God, I'm going to take this fleece. And most of us know what a fleece is, something that we cover up. Here's another cover. God has already said, God is the cover, but God gives us another cover. I'm going to lay it down on the ground, God. And if you are with me, see right now, Gideon don't even want to admit it. But I'm going to admit it for him. He was asking God for a miracle. And that's what we're needing tonight. We're needing miracles. Do you still believe in miracles? Do you still believe that God can, can show a miracle in this famine, in this low time, in this place that we can't see what tomorrow will bring? Can you ask God for a miracle? God is still in a miracle working business. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. And so... In this time, Gideon laid the fleets down. And when he laid the fleets down, he decided he's going to go to sleep. Now, if you're worried about something, why would you lay down and go to sleep? Why would you get comfortable and go to sleep? Gideon had to know that God was with him. Gideon had to know that the same God that he'd been serving is the same God that's with us now. So he laid the fleets down and he went to sleep. And he woke up the very thing that he asked God for. He, it happened. Don't you want to ask God for something and then you wake up in the morning and it happened? It happened just like that. And so I'm, I'm encouraging you tonight that if you believe in the Lord, if you believe that he can do what he said he's going to do. See, this is a promise that he had already promised Gideon that he would be with him. Gideon laid it down. He laid down and he went to sleep. The next morning he woke up and what he asked him for in the very first test that he asked him. God, if I wake up, let the ground be dry, but let the feet be wet. The very morning he woke up, the fleet was soaking wet. Can you imagine him wringing it out? He probably could have drowned if he had laid his head down anymore. He probably would have just drowned. Why? Because it was soaking wet that God had to let him know. Not even a drop of water on the ground. 
And that was the first test. And Gideon would begin to feel his, his help coming on. See, when he knew that the help was there, sometimes you ask for something to be right in your hand. How many of you asked for something to be right in your hand? My mama used to say, you, you're crying like you're hungry, but you got a loaf of bread up under your arm. And so Gideon had that water to prove that God was with him. He went to sleep. Somebody could have came by and pulled it on him. He don't know, but he was comfortable enough to ask God for it. And when he asked God for it, it was delivered. And so in the second thing he asked, he was telling God, God, don't be, don't be angry with me right now. I got one more test. Got one more thing to ask you. I got one more thing. God, my cupboard is bad, but I got one more thing if I might just ask you for. Can you reverse it? <laughs> Gideon decided, let the ground be soaking wet and let nothing but the blanket be dry, the fleet be dry, the wool be dry. Sometimes we have to just test it for what it is. And when God delivers us, whose report will you believe? I'm asking you tonight, will you believe the report of the Lord? If the Lord say he's with you, will you believe that he'll be with you? Will you believe that he will deliver? Will you believe in the miracles that he have for you? Will you believe that even when the doctor say you're sick, you believe in that you're already well? Will you believe that even if this COVID came into your house, God will help you inside of it and outside of it. That's the kind of God that we serve. See, Gideon decided to switch it, but God was still there. When it's good, God is there. When it's bad, God is there. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? That's there at all times and that will be with you at all times. So do you have a Gideon spirit with you tonight? Do you have a Gideon spirit in your heart? Can you pass the Gideon spirit on to your neighbors? Can you go on your job and have a Gideon spirit? Even if you're not working, can you believe God for the next job? See, some people right now, even in this pandemic that we're going through, even in this time that we're going through, your families may have been struck. You might have lost some loved ones. You might have, have not had food on the table. But some of us, oh my, we can be just like Gideon. We've had more than enough. God has blessed us. We, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about what the government has given you, but God has blessed some of us. When we used to be sick, when we had to go to work or when we had to just be at home, we, we, we now are well. We now feel better. We now have been able to do things around the house. We now have been able to get closer to our families. We now have been able to spend quality time. Some of you can't say that this pandemic has taken you all the way down. Some of you gotta say this pandemic has made me stronger. This pandemic has made me better. This pandemic has made me get closer to the Lord. I believe, why? Because it hadn't struck me. If you're looking today at this, at this page, if you're on here today, God. God has blessed you and he's been with you the whole time. Won't you believe that he'll be with you until the end of time? I believe that. I believe that. So tonight as I end, I'm asking you to ask God, are you with me? Be bold and encouraged and courageous enough to listen and look and hear and see the report of God that he will show you that he's with you. He's been with you and he will always be with you. One thing about when this pandemic started, God was with us. One thing about it while we're in this pandemic, God is with us. And I'm for sure because he's brought us through, see it's the through you got to get with it, that he will be with us at the end because it's not for our glory but it's for his glory. I hope that you have been blessed by this word. I hope that you have been encouraged on some kind of level that you can say God is with me even when it don't feel like he's with you even when you can't trace him even when you you don't feel well today but you know that you're going to be better on tomorrow I'm hoping and praying that this word has found your cabinet of your heart and you have been able to place this word in it in the name of Jesus I do pray let us pray most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you have proven that you are with us, God. Father God, we just thank you right now, Lord God, that even if our faith seems to waver, Lord God, you still are with us, Lord God. Father God, even when we ask you for things, Lord God, and it don't seem as if though it's, it's going to work out. It doesn't seem as if though it may pan out, Lord God, but I know for sure. We, the people that are listening to your word and taking in your word, we know for sure 
that you are with us. And for those, Lord God, that are not sure, for those, Lord God, that, 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 that have a question, Lord God, let them be able to ask the question and get the answer, Lord God. Most of the time, we want an answer, God. But Father God, your presence is the answer, Lord God. And you are the will that will make the way stronger, Lord God. So, Father God, we just praise you and we magnify you, God. That means we make you so big, God. We make you bigger than our problems, bigger than our situations, bigger than our mishaps, God. We make you bigger, God. And we always give you the glory and the honor. In the awesome name of Jesus, I pray. I hope that you were very in tuned with this word. I hope that you uh, have been encouraged by this word. I hope that you will share this word with somebody that may not feel or may may not know if God is with them. So we want to just thank you for tuning in. But I also say that during this time, we still want to be able to be a blessing to the house of God that God has given us dominion over. And so at this time, um, Rhema Word, um, if you want to, and those that are listening and that's just been blessed, um, the ways to give is on the screen and you can find it there. Um, and we hope that you tune in with us until we get through what we're getting through. We thank you so much. We thank uh, Man of God, Apostle KJ Mack, for giving opportunity um, to still get the word out to the people of God. The concern of God is the concern of us. And we love you and we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen.